Good afternoon, Scott Riley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. Yes, the Dow Jones had its worst day of the year, the S&P, the markets. What could you have seen? That's what you have to ask yourself. Not looking at the headlines, not like, oh my goodness, how did this happen? Because if you're a member of T3 Live, if you follow all of us on Twitter, if you watch the morning call, you watch the recap, we try and give you the right roadmap for you to participate with. We tell you to know your time frame and you know, come up with some type of process that keeps you in the game, limiting your losses, and hopefully on the right side of the tape. Because I do think a lot of people had really good days as they figured perhaps this could finally be the day we broke below the 50-day moving average and get follow through to the actual short side. And yes, traders do make money short. Traders actually, some like to be short. I know I'm not really that good at it, but you know, at some point, you know, you have to do things a little bit different. And A, if you're not a great short, raising cash is cool. Or B, if you're not a great short, try some, you know, with a little bit less. So recently the question is, how fast could you have maneuvered over the last two days? Because we've been putting together this roadmap for the S&P. You know, I've been trying to do now like two or three charts a day just to give you some quick language and quick levels. So, you know, trim and trail could be like levels and language. So, you know, just to keep you guys in the, in the, in the loop throughout the course of the day besides, you know, the videos that we do and all our premium products. And if you look here, here's a chart of the S&P. First of all, here's your outside day. That was May 22nd. Must have been a little quinky dink that on May 21st, <laughs> Goldman Sachs upgraded their view on the S&P. Great timing, fellas. From there, we talked about how do you navigate this? Okay, remember this little wedge type pattern? Remember 1640? Well, this was one step of the process. Here was, you know, your outside day, a day to trim longs, a day to get out of excess, a day to take notice. What does this day mean? Okay, we talk about it in many different ways. Okay, if you come back to me, you have that candlestick means an outside day outside of the usual range that could be a trend change. I call it a right dog reversal because I'm a little narcissistic, I guess, or whatever. It's easier to remember than an outside day. And especially if you follow me, you know, Red Dog, that's my nickname. So I come up with some cute names. So Red Dog reversal, outside day. But truly, it's a day to take notice. Because sometimes those days to take notice do not amount to much, okay? You, it, it, you, you switch some gears, you went in neutral, you figure it out. But if you notice that day, you at least look for clues to see what goes on the days thereafter. So if you go back to the chart, you'll see the days there, thereafter were a little bit different, right? Here was your upper wedge. Here was your high, that outside day, the lower high. Then that Friday, remember that Friday when we broke below that level here, went down, put a small little candlestick, and then what happened? First time we retested and it was contained. Because if you look at how many other times we've had somewhat of a corrective little phase so far in 2013 to see if this time was different, you know, this time we came in, small little reversal candle, kind of like what you had here. Okay, but look what happened after that, igniting holding, continuing. Here we had that reversal on the 50-day, powering through, going sideways, shown commitment. So those were your past two pivot areas to compare it to. So on this upper level, okay, you had the outside day, the engulfing move to the downside, the retest that actually got um, defended by the bears, and then this was your first test of the 50-day. Fast forward to your second test of the 50 day, which was very surprising, but sometimes you do get double bottoms, and this one had a higher low. And then look what happened two days before the Fed. We tried to push above a trend line, okay? Last two times we pushed above a trend line. This one we pushed above it, and then held above it and continued. This time we pushed above it, held in there, and never closed below it and continued. What happened this time? We pushed above it and then failed alongside the Fed saying they were going to start to taper. The Fed was going to take away some of the you know, accommodation. The pace of purchase is going to decrease at some particular point. So right there yesterday, this spot, this 1640-ish, okay, was your level, 1642 to 1648. Posted it yesterday, probably around 330. That was when I got stopped out of my lungs, and that's when I took some losses. You know, losses happen as traders. But if you honor your stops, your losses could be less. So what happened there? Got out of my six longs because I was saying, okay, if we trade above this 
downtrend and, and show commitment like the prior two pivots, I got to be in, along some stocks, especially the best acting stocks. But what happened? We went back below it, got stopped out, said, okay, this is you know a bad day, but you know I'm not going to let it get worse. I'm not going to have the market control me. I'm going to control my keyboard like a lot of people in T3 Live land. You know, or our common our, our content providers, or, or even just a lot of people on the site. A lot of people on the site started getting very bearish there too. Some went out short, some got out of stuff. So, but anyway, that was your, um, you know, the, a red flag, or that was a spot to make an adjustment. So you go back to the chart, go one more time, engulfing. It also closed below the prior day low, and then even this low. So that really told you to be out of the way. It told some people be net short. That's what the good book would say. Then what happened today? Okay, we gap down through the 50-day moving average, something we talked about pre-market, something we even talked about in the, the free morning note that hopefully you read if you come back to me. All right, there's really no chart pattern. You look in the chart patterns, you look at different books of technical terms, this and that, you don't really see a, a triple bottom, right? You see double bottom, you see double top, same way usually you don't have a triple top or a quadruple top because that means you break through for back up there again, it's that strong. Same way you go down to a triple bottom potential you know, you don't hear that term because usually they don't hold. And this time you had a gap and go through the 50-day, which gave it power. So what happened in the first uh, 60 to 75 minutes of the day? We held below the 50-day. The Talked about it on the, in, the, in the virtual trading floor. I think I even made a tweet saying, this is the first time in 2013 we've spent time below the 50-day, showing the bears in control, sellers making a stand. That was a spot to potentially get short, okay? And then from there, you look at what happened. We sliced through um, the 50-day. We took out a few different points of reference. This was your 1608. Here was your 1598, and this is where we closed. And now some people will say, how did this happen? Okay, you know what? A lot of signs were here the last two days, as well as what started back at the, at the May 22nd outside day. But you have to have your roadmap. You have to be committed to learning this stuff in order to navigate it. Otherwise, you're just a macro investor and you might as well you know, sit back and you know, at this point, you're probably still fine because we're going to see maybe more corrective activity. But at some point, I think we find footing and we continue. So anyway, what's this? This is the 100-day. This is something we were talking about today. Didn't think we'd get this far down today, but who never, you never know what's going to happen. But if you're sitting in cash, which is a position, if you're sitting there short or you're out of a lot of your longs, you know, you're actually excited about this. So 1576 is your next spot. Sometimes you go back up, you know, and you retest an area first. So to initiate here on the close to be short is a little difficult. Your spot to have done that as a, as a quick trader was yesterday or the first hour of the day. But here's a, so there's your, you know, your 100 day now. And here's another level which coincides to the last time we had a pivot low, which comes in around 1536, which is still above the 200 day. Some say, I think for the last, I don't know, decade or more that there hasn't been a year that's gone by that we haven't at least tested the 200 day. So that's why people are like Red Dog, you buying the dip, you buying the dip. I'm like, you know what? Not really. We just broke one of the trend lines. We just closed below the 50 day. We're still above the 100 day. We're still not near the 200 day. So why be in a rush? Do you want to press shorts here? Probably not the time. Time was overnight, the time was in the first hour. Now you cover some and if your thesis is that we're going a lot lower, you stay short a little bit because you know on, a, on an up move you'll be able to short that. So with that said, you know, a lot of these charts look the same. A lot of them broke trend lines like this. You want to look at the XLF. XLF also broke a trend line. Yesterday the banks were a little weak. Here they closed on the lows, engulfed the 8 and the 21 day came into the 50-day, a little stronger, I guess, than the overall market because it's holding the 50-day or it's at the 50-day versus the S&P that's through it. So here is your next level in the XLF to watch, a little bit closer to 19. So we'll see what happens right around there. And then here is the 100-day. So now what you want to do is take a pen and write down these levels so you have a roadmap for the next few weeks because when it gets there, everyone's going to get really bearish. But these are the spots that you measure. You don't want to have opinions about them. You want to have spots and you want to be aware of them. This is one, this is another. Okay, here yesterday was your way out. Failed at the trend line, closing the lows, engulfed two days, boom. Okay, let's see the home builders. I think the home builders probably broke that trend line for the first time. Let's see. Okay, you could draw it right here. Um, this is, I guess, that low there, going all the way up. Just, you know, just take your little crayon here and, you know, it, it pretty much uh, right around there. Okay, 
home builders, after that big rally, look what, you know, this took one, two, three, four days to rally off of here. It took two days. Those two days show you power. What took four days to bounce took two days to come down, that means that the sellers have control. Okay, so now with that being said, you know, this could be your next level or this, could, this group could get to the 200 day while the S&Ps come lower. And now some will be talking about maybe another head and shoulders. This is the left. Here's your head. Here's your right shoulder, blah, blah, blah. And now it's coming through the neckline. You know, and then from 32 and a half down to this, you know, that takes you down to the 200 day at least. Um, as far as, you know, you could probably look at retail that had a double top yesterday. You know, you had to think, you had to be on your toes. This is a big boys game, a very fast market. Here, reverse at the highs. This was that ascending channel we showed you in the morning call. Boom, just like that, into support through the 50-day and the 100 days all the way down here. So we'll see if uh, the S&P gets to the 100-day and this stops in front of it. Perhaps, you know, we'll be looking for some relative strength in, in retail. Um, let's see what the industrials did. Industrials also it looks more like the spiders, a tiny bit stronger, where you had a, a breakout failure, okay? Write down the word breakout failure, okay? This is a term, if you come back to me, something that you should think about in your head. If a trend tries to break out and fails, that means they're using that breakout for distribution, meaning shorts that were at that trend line get squeezed, new buyers come in, and if it gets negated the next day, that means institutions used it to sell you their stock by squeezing the shorts, inducing new longs, and that is a technical bad term, and that's a uh, 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 another one of those flags that say, okay, that shouldn't have happened if we were going to be strong, then you make adjustments. You have the outside day, then you have a breakout failure. Okay, if something does that, that or something or a situation happens that shouldn't happen, you take notice. Anyway, for this, this was one of them. Okay, same thing with the spiders. Tried to break out, squeeze shorts through this trend line. Okay, got some buyers in and then trapped them. Okay, and then what happened? Boom, gap down to the 50 day. So at this point, we'll see what happens with these industrials, but chances are it looks like it's in no man's land and it couldn't get down to here before you're worried about buying that potential dip, if that happens. So with that said, you know, someone asked me, what about Apple? Okay, well, Apple, besides the, the, the mess of a move from the highs, you know, we talked about the potential of this um, red dog reversal, no, not red dog reversal, um, inverted head and shoulders pattern that had two patterns going on, remember? Okay, the inverted head and shoulders pattern, the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. What happened? Resistance never got taken out. What also happened? An ascending channel. Okay, I was long, we're trying to be long in this and hopefully, you know, rooting for a bottom in Apple considering look where it came from. You know, look at how every different moving average was violated and, you know, from 700, this was your first head and shoulders top pattern we talked about. This was another trend line that broke right here, stayed below, and then blah, 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 some moves along the way. So we're rooting for an accumulation pattern down here. Okay, but what you had to take notice of, two of them going on, one, an accumulation pattern, but then boom, ascending channel broke to the downside. And then you had, this was your day of the developers conference that was supposed to be a bullish day. It wasn't. And then what happened yesterday, we broke below 428.5, which was a level that we mentioned as another, you know, potential actionary to get out or get short. And then today, it tried to bounce off of 419 and then failed again. So now what do you have? You really don't have many points of reference. You have 407, okay, and then you have the lows. So still not acting well, okay? You have to measure your time frame here, and I know it's Apple, but we've been trying to say, take the name Apple away from this chart because this chart, you know, has been very, very weak. Anyway, some stronger stocks also started to come in a little bit, okay? We talk about how they do get to everything. So yesterday, you did have, um, you know, your outside day right here, okay, with topping tail. Here's a little follow through to the downside, still holding in very well, you know, but some of these things come in real fast if the market doesn't, you know, find its footing. So here's, you know, one level in Google and here's probably another, but all in all, you had uh, uh, some nice trades here. And even today, it did give you a way out. At least if you took home some Google or you played it this morning, it almost went positive, gave you a bounce, but then it weakened, just like Amazon. Amazon failed at the highs again, couldn't take it out. You know, yesterday I was long Amazon. I got stopped out here also. As it closed back down, I was playing it for momentum. Momentum didn't happen. I got out of the way. And then today with some follow through, it's still above the 21 days, still looks okay, still above 
you know, this breakout area. But again, I'm not playing it as an investor in Amazon. Right now I was playing it for a good trade, just like this two-day trade, and then maybe a new high trade if the market was gonna be strong. But what happened, the market failed yesterday, so you trim out of stuff. Okay, it's still somewhat strong. If you're an institution or you're a mutual fund, you know, it still looks okay, <laughs> still um, you know, holding higher. You know, if, but, but if again, if you're a swing trader, a, if you played it for momentum, momentum left. B, you know, I would say right here, you know, if you're playing it for a little bit of a, a weakening trend break, if it breaks this, some people will probably short it for a move down to 265. So know your time frame there. As far as Netflix um, traded into the gap um, from, you know, that, that, that news the other day, um, still holding in pretty much, you know, a little bit better. But again, when a tide moves one way, it's hard for some things to go against it. And this too, it's going to be, not, you know, it's not going to be breaking out and going higher when you have the Dow down 350 points. So just, again, measure how, you, you know, your commitment to these things. And tomorrow, now we trade versus today's low and we figure it out. Even Tesla was up stronger and then started to give way. You know, this, the, a lot, everything, again, gets pressured when the market is in correction sell-off mode. So if you're not a long-term investor in Tesla, you might want to watch this trend line here because if this breaks, you should at least see the 21-day and maybe a little bit below if we see more intensity to the downside because everything winds up getting hit when you're in a corrective phase. And right now, at least this pattern here, you know, could be something that changes. TBT, you know, really nice move today. Congratulations if uh, it's part of your macro thesis. We listed this many times in, you know, in our 2013 thesis. Here's the gap. Here is we're going to close above 70. Some follow through. Hopefully you trimmed and trailed some, but still have it in the drawer. Same way the TLT, you know, downside. Uh, remember this head and shoulders pattern, we've had it off the charts many times, you know, this being the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, the neckline, it, you know, this morning we said if you're short, maybe you cover some, and, but also keep some short in the drawer, because I do think within the next 3, 6, 9, 12 months, it gets below 105, but you have to just know, you know, your activity with it. Gold, okay, this is where I made uh, my money today, uh, or the majority of it. You know, I've talked about gold many times. Technically, it's shown you the way. You know, a lot of people have opinions with gold. It should go up because of currency wars. It should go up because of inflation. It should go up for this. It should go up for that. P.S. Here is your, you know, your, 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 your outside day. Here is, you know, key resistance. This was your intermediate inflection point that failed. If you were a gold bug, a macro investor, we told you to watch out for 149.5, slice through. And then literally couldn't find a friend after consolidating this big move lower. And then boom, there you go. And it closed on the dead lows yesterday, giving some traders a little bit of a, a green light to, to try and get in there short. Okay, and a lot of guys did that. You know, RD, good call. A lot of people, good call. I went out on the VTF. People soared. Some jumped in. Harry, I was happy you were there too. Not, you know, I wish I could name everyone. I'm just not going to. But anyway, boom, big gap down, big hole in the chart. You know, you look at this now. Um, you know, it's uh, definitely a tough spot to sell now. You could have sold here, you could have sold there, you could have sold here. You know, but I, don't, I still don't think it's a buy, you know, for, except for maybe some quick trades. You know, here's one level, um, and then here's a, another. So there's still some room to the downside. You know, look what, you know, what transpired here. Um, so, you know, tomorrow we'll see what happens. If a trade through today is low, you know, see what happens. But ultimately, you know, lots of points to technically make adjustments if you didn't have opinions here, here, here. And those were just like bottom points, not even in the bases. If people had conviction, you had a lot of time to actually build a position before, you know, resolving to that downside. So here we are, okay? It's Thursday, it's the end of June, tomorrow's quad witching. You know, we're now probably about, wait, six and a half, seven percent off the highs. IBD will probably go back to market correction you know, after going back to market uh, confirmed uptrend, I think on Monday, it is what it is. You know, I guess they're having a little problems in their big picture method with the volatility. But again, I still think that a lot of their strategies and methods stand the test of time. But, you know, it's been hard to figure out the exact market composure. So anyway, um, when they do go to market correction, we're typically oversold. Our oscillator is almost minus 60. That is a spot that's hard to initiate new shorts. But it doesn't mean you could blindly buy for bounces especially if things start to deteriorate fast. So time to be careful, you know, time to, hopefully you're past that time, not, not time to be careful, hopefully you're tactical already. Yesterday was your day to, to switch gears. Today was your day if you got short, you had to follow through, if you were long, I don't think people were really trying to buy stuff today. You knew that, 
you know, 50 day probably doesn't hold on a triple bottom. But now, you know, you, you start writing down levels, you get a plan, you look for quality stocks and you figure out spots you might want to own them if the market confirms those spots. You know, it is the summer. I'm actually happy we're in corrective mode because you could actually, you know, go to the beach, take some time off, not be stressed out that if the market's rallying, you have to have a portfolio approach on, you have to worry about all these things. Now you don't have to worry about anything. Okay, you could just come in, tactically embrace the volatility, test levels, buy some things on the stretch down low, maybe short some things on the bounces, and then we get to a key spot and we see that outside day to the upside. Maybe we put on some swing longs as long as there's commitment to it and we see relative strength and then we figure it out. But that might not be tomorrow and it might not be next week. Okay, we have a long summer in front of us. So hopefully if you were bullish and you rode the trend, you know, you, you, you booked some nice gains so far for the first half of the year. If you saw that outside day on May 22nd, maybe you switched some gears. You know, you saw some of the, the action after that day to take notice that led to this move lower and you took advantage of some of the short side or you just sold some longs and said, you know what, I'm not a good short. I'm going to wait to buy back because I'm creating alpha for myself because I wrote a trend. Remember we talked about as long as stocks ride their 8 and 21 day, we try and stay in portfolio approach. Are we above the 8 and 21 day? No. That's when we sell, when we start breaking those 8 and 21 days. You know, then when we break the 50 day, it shows us the health of the market weakening and then, you know, hopefully around the 100 200 day, it gets close to being viable. You know, my followers or my community, I, I try and educate that you're not a seller at the 200 day because you've missed probably four other signs where you could add much better prices with upper level stops and better moving averages. So if that's not you, just learn. Okay, there's gonna be so much opportunity in this market moving forward both ways. So if you haven't performed the way you want to perform, no matter what your age is, no matter what your commitment level is, there's always time to learn. And one of the great ways to learn, I think, go real quickly to the webinar. Rob Smith is doing a webinar at 4.30. He has a, a method that you don't have to have much risk on. Okay, it's all about tactically finding patterns on whatever time frame you trade. You know, he goes inside and out, outside and in, a lot of fun terms that could make you a lot of money. So tune in, have a great night, and again, Keep learning, keep working on your process. Scott Riley, T3 Live, the recap. See you tomorrow morning. I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.com. You don't become a great trader by watching videos and taking courses. You become a great trader through live screen time. Accelerate that learning curve by tapping into the experience of seasoned professionals. Currently, we're offering five-day free trials to each of our four mentoring rooms. In the mentoring rooms, we teach our strategies in the context of the live market. To sign up for a free trial, go to the T3 Live education page, fill out the form, and get started when the next trading session begins. We hope to see you in one of our mentoring rooms.